Hi, Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Welcome to another edition of the Physics Unmask video series. In this video, we will be discussing about the bending of light and other interesting properties of light. Light is a thing that is all too familiar to us because we depend on the presence of light to see or to let us see things around us. In this Physics Unmasked video series, we will explore the nature and properties of light that we can easily see and experience in our everyday life. Did you know that since ancient times, the nature and properties of light have been a subject of great interest and speculations? The question whether light is waves or particles is one of them, and the discussion of which we will be discussed in another video. In this video, we will jump straight to two common properties of light, that is reflection and refraction. You watch in the rear mirror of a car, you can see people and objects behind you. Yes, this is made possible because light from those people and objects hitting the mirror is, is reflected toward your eyes. Now here is a very nice visual effects of children standing near a smooth and shining tabletop surface. Again, this is due to the reflection of light. Comparing the two pictures, you will notice that image reflected from the plane mirror is much brighter and clearer than the image reflected from the tabletop. Okay, we can explain this difference as follows. When light hits a surface, part of the light energy will be reflected and part will be transmitted and absorbed by the surface. So the image of the children is not so bright because some of the light is transmitted and absorbed by the tabletop surface. The plane mirror, however, reflects all the light incident on it. Very little, if any, is transmitted and absorbed by the mirror surface. You can see images on a smooth surface because light is reflected from, from the surface in a specific and well-defined directions. On the other hand, there is no image form on a rough surface. Does that mean no reflection on a rough surface at all? The answer is yes. The reflection is there, but because the surface is rough, the reflected lights go in many different directions. Thus, no image is formed. Light reflected from a smooth surface is called specular reflection, and reflection from a rough surface is called diffuse reflection. The picture on this slide shows that the ceiling light can be seen on a smooth surface of the laptop PC, but not from reflection on the rough surface. Objects can be seen by the light they emit, or more often by the light they reflect. Reflected light obeys the law of reflection, which we'll be discussing in detail later in the video. Look at the scene in the picture above. Can you identify which surfaces exhibit specular reflections and which surfaces exhibit Diffuse reflection. The river surfaces generally exhibit specular reflection. It may not be perfect specular reflection because the river is flowing and there are ripples on the water surfaces. Lights from the trees, the ground, the grass and the sky exhibit diffuse reflections and this reach our eyes as well. A much better specular reflection can be seen on the car windows. Window on the driver's side reflects lights from what looks like a hill with some trees. The back window reflects the lamppost on the bridge that right behind this view. This is a telltale sign that the car is parked on the riverbank under the bridge. Most objects in the pictures, trees, ground, grass, shirts, etc exhibit diffuse reflection, with light being reflected in all directions. Next, here is a view of a phenomena associated with the propagation of light. This view of spoon, which apparently seems to bend or broken, and the ligoman limb seems to split, are of course not real. What we see here is the result of light changing its speed 
when it travels or passes through the boundary from one medium to another. The change in speed also results in change in the direction of light propagation. Let's watch this short video of the legal man and we will provide explanation on this phenomena at the end of the video. A Lego man is made to stand in a knee-deep clear water in a plastic container. When we view him directly from the front, his leg seems to be bigger. As we move to the right, his legs split to the left. As we view him from the right side, his legs seems to split to the right. Viewing from the top, he is standing close to one end of the container. The Ligoman movie clearly demonstrated that light behaves differently when it traverses from one medium to another. Just look at the spoon in glass again and the Ligoman pictures. Light from the spoon or Ligoman that is immersed in water seems to make the objects bend or split. So what actually happened? Well, light, when it travels from one medium to another, is bent when it hits the boundary of the two mediums. It bends because light actually changes speed when it crosses the boundary between the two mediums. This phenomena is called the refraction of light. Additionally, the amount of bending depends on the optical density of the medium and the frequency or color of the light wave. To simplify the visual explanation or refraction of light, we will represent light wave as a light ray. Light ray is a straight line representation of the path light wave travels in space. Here is another picture of traveling light wave representations. On the left, the traveling light wave is represented as a sinusoidal waveform and on the right, it is represented as a parallel wave front. Each representation is useful for us to see the change in the wave speed and the wavelength when the light wave propagates through different mediums. The simulated propagation of light in two different mediums here clearly show that the speed and wavelength of the light wave decrease as the light wave propagates or travels in optically denser medium. Okay, now let's analyze all these concepts of reflection and refraction of light and put down its laws in some mathematical expressions. When we say that a material is denser optically, it means that the material has a higher index of refraction n. Index of refraction n of a medium is the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in the medium. The speed of light is equal to the product of its wavelength and frequency, where lambda is the wavelength of light and f is its frequency. In reflection of light, only the propagation direction changes. The speed, wavelength, and frequency of the light wave do not change. In refraction of light, the propagation direction, speed, and wavelength changes. The frequency of the light wave, however, remains the same. Next, let's say we have a light ray incident on a smooth and flat surface of a mirror. This incident ray makes an angle theta 1 with the normal line. This light ray is reflected off the surface at the reflected angle theta 1 prime. Experiments and theory show that the angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence. Therefore, we can write theta 1 prime equal theta 1. This relationship is called the law of reflection. Next, we have a situation where light propagates from medium 1, which is air, to medium 2, glass. The light ray enters the glass at an incident angle theta 1 and refracted inside medium 2, the glass block, at an angle theta 2. 
when light travels from one medium to another, its frequency does not change, but its wavelength and speed change. We can use these properties to relate index of refraction with the wavelengths in the mediums. Thus, the product of wavelength and index of refraction in medium 1 equal the product of wavelength and the index of refraction in medium 2. Index of refraction of vacuum is 1. Since index of refraction of air is very close to that of a vacuum, we can take N1 in this analysis to also equal to 1. Therefore, the index of refraction of a medium is just equal to the ratio of the wavelength of light in vacuum to the wavelength of light in the medium. Now, going back to the boundary or interface between air and glass, we can now write down a well-known relationship between the incidence angle, theta 1, and refraction angle, theta 2. That is the ratio of sine theta 2 to sine theta 1 is equal to the ratio of the speed in medium 2 to the speed in medium 1. And finally, this relationship can be simplified in terms of the indexes of the two mediums. This last relationship is called the Snell's Law of Refraction. Next, let's see a short simulation of reflection and refraction of light when it propagates from one medium to another medium. You may need to pause the video to read the angles and confirm that the law of reflection and refraction apply in this simulation. The white region is medium 1, air, and grey region is medium 2, glass. Light ray coming from less dense to denser medium refracts or bends toward normal line. Okay, this time note that medium 1 is denser than medium 2. So, uh, note that light ray is coming from denser medium to less dense medium. The light ray also refracts or bends but now away from normal line. Do you notice that at a particular angle of incident, light rays does not refract into medium 2. Instead, the ray reflects in medium 1. This phenomena is called total internal reflection. Total internal reflection will be discussed in another video. With that simulations, we have come to the end of this video series. But before that, let us summarize some of the key concepts that we need to understand and remember in order to explain and appreciate the properties of light when it propagates from one medium to another. Light, when it reflects from a surface, obeys laws of reflection, where the angle of incident is equal to the angle of reflection. Light, propagating from one medium to another, is bent or undergo refraction at the boundary between the two mediums. Snell's law described the relationship between angle of incident, angle of refraction, and the refractive index of the mediums. Okay, this series ends here. Till we meet again in the next video. Assalamualaikum and bye-bye.